Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Gordon, edutainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm your host for our series focusing on ways in which you can be more productive with Microsoft Teams. This episode is going to focus on how you can search for commands and figure out what they do. Let's take a look at Microsoft Teams and we'll get started. I've opened up the Teams desktop client. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to focus in on the fact that we are on the Teams indicator here, selecting the Teams area in our navigator. But you know what? It doesn't really matter where we are for this episode because I could easily click on calendar. I could easily click on chat. Doesn't matter. What we're interested in is not what we're selecting here, but what's going on right up here where it says search or type a command. It really should say search for or type a command. But what we're interested in is using that search bar at the top to be able to find commands that we may or may not be familiar with that allow us to do a lot of things in Teams that we may not know we can do because we don't know that we should click on an icon or click on a selector or go three or four layers deep inside a tab to find something. And so instead, we're gonna use a shortcut. We're gonna go up there and search. And we can search one of two ways. We can either, whoops, one second, let me just click in there. We can either type a forward slash, as you can see, or we can type the at sign. And either of them will give us a list of commands. But believe it or not, there is a reason we have two options. They give us different commands. And so you wanna see and understand what is provided using each of these two options. Let's start by putting in a forward slash. So I'm gonna type the forward slash without knowing exactly what command I may be looking for. If I just type the forward slash alphabetically, I see a list of all the potential commands that are available. And if I wanted to start by just focusing on ones maybe with the letter A, as I start typing and narrowing my focus, uh, the system filters for me automatically. Now, it looks like if I type forward slash available, I could set my status to available. Miner might not know that you could do that with just a couple of strokes of the keyboard. Maybe I could type slash activity and see someone's activity or slash away, and I could set my status instead of to available to away. And so if I wanted to do that, I could slash or type forward slash away, and then it says, hey, hit enter to execute. Now, before I do that, let's just come over here, and I know it's kind of hiding under that blue bar right there, but you can see my icon, you can see that I am set to available, right? So let's come over here, let's hit enter to execute. My status is being set to away, good to know. Looks like it's done, even though it didn't come back to say, hey, you're done, it just went away, but that means that it is now done. And sure enough, if I come here, my status indicator has changed and it now says that I'm away. And so I could use keyboard shortcuts or commands, however you want to think of them, right from the search bar to do almost anything in Teams. I don't have to know where to go. I don't have to know what to click on, or I don't have to know where to find something. Actually a really good time-saving feature. Now we did see a complete list of commands. It is alphabetical, and I would encourage you to go through here and read up on them and see what's available to you. You can make calls, you could set your status, you can change your status, you could go right to a team or channel, you can go ahead and see files that may have been sent or created. Anything you can think of just about can be done from here. But if we type in the other option for searching for commands, our at sign, let's do that. We will see a list, as you can see, of users, because the at sign followed by a username or members of Teams will show up. So I'll get a list of users, which can be helpful, because then I could highlight one, hypothetically. And you'll see I could then just type a message right to that person and be able to send that message right to them if I want to, which again, could be very helpful. And if I decide not to, I could send the message right there. If I decide not to, I could just click the X right here and just simply get rid of that option and decide I want to start over again. No big deal. And I can start over with a different command or a different user. But notice, as I scroll down beyond the list of users, I actually have specific commands associated with the at sign that are available to me, separate from the slash commands that are available to do more common things. At stream, I can use the streaming function, uh, the Microsoft Stream program to collaborate and to share content. At news, I can look for news at places, get information about different places, etc. So these are commands of a type, but they're actually more shortcuts to a variety of applications and functions 
specifically as opposed to commands that operate within teams. And so we do want to know the difference as we're searching. One that I find valuable potentially, I've loaded the weather app up already, so it is there. Weather may not show up in yours unless you activate it. In one of our upcoming episodes, I'm going to show you how to work with apps and show you how to do this if you're interested. But let's say you wanted to know what the weather was like somewhere, wherever that may be. Click on weather. Let me zoom out here. It shows you that you can add this in if you don't already have it. So you could get it if you want it. And or let's just click add. We'll put it in there. And when I do, you can see that I'm now invited to search for a location to find the weather. Let's say that we want to search for the weather here in Gainesville, where our studios are. There we go, got to spell it correctly. And you can see Gainesville, Florida, right at the top there. I can click and I can see information about where we are, humidity, wind, who knows what. And I can actually get more details and be taken out to a weather site uh, indirectly or directly if I choose to. Or I can copy this information and then I can go ahead and perhaps decide that I want to send that off to Wes. And I can send that message off to him, telling him what the weather's like. He's sitting right outside the studio, actually, down the hall from me. So he probably already knows what the weather's like. But I can easily make use of that search bar to operate very efficiently if I become conversant with and very comfortable with the ways in which I can search for commands. Hopefully that's going to help you to be more productive as well. I'll be back with more episodes in our series. But until then, happy teaming. Check out the playlist for more Microsoft Teams tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.